Hey animators, BH Ghost has been around for almost four years now, so I've added quite a few updates to it in that time, and um, they're kind of scattered throughout a few different videos. So I thought I'd bring everything together and just do one video that kind of gives you all of the, the current feature set. So let's start off with the basics. I can open the tool by just running the script from my shelf here, and you'll see it asks me to you know add some meshes, so I can select the character mesh. I just hit add meshes or if I add say the whole character it'll add a few other things there I don't need that so I can remove that I don't need the eyes necessarily so I can remove those and then once I click on the meshes tab here it closes up and it's kind of ready to use one other little shortcut though just to tell you to know if you select a mesh before you run the script it automatically opens up like that so you can see the mesh has already been added there so I find that's just a little bit of a quicker way to, to get access to it one other thing is, often your character is unselectable, so you've got to make it selectable, just add it to the meshes list, and then set it up. And that can be a little bit tedious, especially if you're working with a number of characters in the same scene. So, one option that I find really handy that I use all the time is if you go to this little arrow here, and go to Tools, and click on this Create Shelf button. And you'll see it's probably going to be off the screen here, but what that does is it creates a shelf button that loads the tool with this character already set up so I can close this and load it again and now it's already got that character in it so I can have another character and I can add another shelf button and I can edit that and you know change the name of it and so on to make that like Stuart or whatever the name of the character is so it's just a little bit of a quicker way to to do it so that's the basic functions then the uh, the GUI itself the controls are fairly self-explanatory if I ghost the mesh there you'll see it's quite small with this character so what I do is I use this slider to adjust the thickness um, if you find you're using a really large character you're working in a scene that's really big you can go to the mode option here and select 10 by and uh, nothing happens until you use the slider again but you'll notice now it's got a much bigger range so on this character it's too much but uh, if your character is really big you might find that useful the other thing that, that's in the here as well is the smooth option. If your character's been uh, using viewport smoothing or using a subdiv proxy, you can enable that option and it'll actually smooth the ghost as it creates them. It will make them considerably slower though because obviously you're creating a more dense mesh that way. So I generally leave that off unless I need the, the extra fidelity. Another little feature that I added quite fairly recently is high down playback. That works in Maya 2016 or newer. It basically uses the new feature that was added in 2016 that I use all the time for character controllers. If I show the controllers here, you'll notice as soon as I press play, they, they hide. That's because I've added them to a layer here, and I've turned this P, the, the playback attribute, off. So as soon as I scrub, that, that's that's an inbuilt Maya function. But I thought it'd be cool to leverage that for the ghost. So if I ghost, say, here and here and here again, the scene will slow down a bit because I'm ghosting a fair bit of geometry there. What I can do is I can enable this hide on playback mode, which works. It just basically creates a layer. You can see this hide ghost layer. Uh, so now as soon as I scrub, they hide, and I get nice fast scrubbing, and nice fast playback, and then as soon as I press stop again, they show up again. Um, I can remove that, or switch that mode off, where is it? Mode, hide and playback, and you'll see it deletes that layer again, and now, now they're there all the time. You can also manually toggle them off, on and off here, with the visibility button, that's just if you want to keep the, the ghosts you've created, but just hide them for a moment. Uh, you can also bust individual ghosts, so if I want to bust just this frame, I can just go to that frame and press bust one. And again, I can bust this frame, bust one, or I can bust all, which will get rid of all of them in the scene and remove any nodes. And I, I usually recommend that you hit that before you do any saving, because otherwise you're going to be bloating your, your scene file a little bit with extra geo. The other thing that I find useful as well is um, if you select controller I'd say I've got keys on this I don't have keys on every frame I've got keys on one three six nine say I want to ghost those if I select that range with that controller selected and hit ghost now it'll just ghost those keys whereas if I don't have any controller selected and I select I'll just bust all again if I select say a range it'll ghost every frame so you know that'll get pretty heavy with a character but with uh, balancing balls and things like that it's, it can be really handy the other thing you'll notice is that it gets a little bit tricky to see things when you've got a couple of ghosts very close together uh, it gets, starts getting difficult to tell which one is which so I've added some, I've got color options for the main ghosts here that you can change those I've also got a color B option here and you can change that option using this drop down and the um, 
the way to get those colors is to hold alt while you hit ghost and now you'll see that that middle ghost now is yellow or if i just hit it normally it'll go back to green again so i've got two different options there for colors which can make things a bit more legible another feature is sometimes you don't want to ghost the whole character for reasons of clarity and for reasons of speed uh, so what i find is pretty handy sometimes go into face mode for example and i'm going to select just the foot polys and i'm going to go to uh, create sets quick select set i'm going to call this ghost with a small g and set capital s i just hit ok and now once i've created that ghost set in there the tool will automatically look for that as you run it so now i get just that, that foot being ghosted i find that's really useful sometimes when you're doing sort of more finesse stuff and again i can i can kind of go a little bit more nuts with that i can add more more ghosts that way with, with less slowdown uh, another feature that's really handy sometimes is tracking. If you, know, you say you want to track a particular feature, like say the nose, um, you know, you often use things like Maya's inbuilt um, motion trails for this, but they can be quite slow sometimes. Uh, so, what I find I'd like to do sometimes is say select maybe the head controller and go to tools here, create tracker. And what that does, it's kind of hidden in there, but it selects it. And, um, I'm going to grab it there. It creates a sphere, a low poly sphere, and you can grab that and scale it. Um, you know, make it whatever shape you want. And now I've got basically, it's already added that as well to the meshes list. So if I ghost now, I'm ghosting that tracker. So I can ghost things like that. I can track the arc that that nose is traveling through. And you can add as many of those as you like. Uh, again, the more you add, the more things will slow down, but it can be, can be handy for looking at spacing and that kind of stuff. And then you, you go back to tools again here and delete tracker, and that'll get rid of that. And one other function is replace mode, which I find I use quite a lot, actually, uh, particularly when I'm polishing. What I tend to do for that is I create one ghost and then, you know, remove it and then create another one. And basically this just automates that. So if you enable replace mode, I should mention as well, if I want to go back to a ghost in the entire character, that set still exists in the scene. I just open the uh, outliner and delete that set. Uh, where is it? Ghost set. Just delete that. And now I'm back to ghost in the entire character. And, can, and basically what that means is each time I create a new ghost, if I enable that again, it, uh, it'll it replace all the other ones. So it just means you've only ever got one ghost active. I find that very useful for, for, for polishing sometimes when you just want to see one ghost and compare the poses compare how like the poses are flowing in and out of a particular one using my key poses I guess so I think that's pretty much it I think that's all the, all of the functions and I've tried to make this as quick as possible if, if any of it's been a bit confusing I would suggest going to my Vimeo page and looking at the individual videos or going to my graphite9.com forward slash Maya downloads page and you'll see the ghost tool there with a list of the updates that I've added and there's links to individual videos on individual features but that is a quick very quick uh, run through of all the main features hope that helps cheers